Up to a million people in the United States are living with Parkinson's disease. Lena has been living with it for more than 23 years, Ken for five years. They are sharing their experiences and medical experts are sharing their knowledge to help you understand what a diagnosis of Parkinson's means to you and to your loved ones. You'll also hear from actress Holly Robinson-Pete who became a healthcare advocate because of her personal connection to this illness. You can live very well with Parkinson's disease today. Forty thousand times a year, someone in the United States is diagnosed with Parkinson's disease. Two words that can cause concern, even fear. I remember I sat with my hands like this. Can't be true, can't be true. But uh, then I picked myself up and went to work, actually. Lena continued her career as a social worker for more than two decades after her diagnosis. Ken still works full-time in marketing. As their experiences show, by partnering with a healthcare team, people with Parkinson's disease may continue to lead active, busy lives. We have multiple treatments that can help symptoms day to day. Some are quite dramatic. So I think to be diagnosed with Parkinson's now is very different than it would have been 10 or 15 years ago. Holly Robinson-Pete remembers when things were different. Her father, Matt Robinson, was a successful television performer and writer. He was the first Gordon on Sesame Street and wrote scripts for hit programs like The Cosby Show. But when he took her east to college, she noticed something was wrong. We said our goodbyes and he walked away and I noticed he had a limp in his left leg. So I said, Dad, why are you walking like Fred Sanford? Another show he used to write for. And he made some joke like, don't worry about me, or just to get good grades or you'll be running a junkyard too. So we laughed about that, but then that limp became worse. He eventually was diagnosed uh, with Parkinson's disease. This was in the 80s when we didn't have the internet, the luxury of you know, the, the, the tremendous examples of Muhammad Ali or Michael J. Fox. It was a really dark time to get this diagnosis. All I saw when I went to the Sarah Lawrence College Library was neurological and incurable. Those are the two words I saw. As the years went by, Holly learned more about Parkinson's disease. She and her husband, NFL quarterback Rodney Pete, started a foundation to help others with this illness and support research. So we started a Holly Rod Foundation about 10 years ago um, to help support families and elevate the quality of life. I just feel when you have the opportunity to shed some light on something, um, I feel it's your duty to, to do that. Ken and his wife, Anne, are also active advocates in the search for a cure. But as a patient, Ken says the first step for people with Parkinson's disease is to understand it. My advice to someone who has been newly diagnosed with Parkinson's disease would be to do research. Get to know the disease itself. So here are the basics about Parkinson's disease. It's named for Dr. James Parkinson, who first identified it in 1817. Parkinson's disease is a degenerative disease of the brain. That means a disease that's caused by brain cells dying in certain parts of the brain. And in Parkinson's disease, the most uh, important brain cells that are lost are ones that control the speed and timing and coordination of movement. When Parkinson's disease starts out, it's very mild. You may not see much at all, maybe a little tremor, maybe a little shuffling of one leg when you're walking. It is characterized by a number of features, including tremor, shaking, which most people recognize, 
slowness of movement, stiffness, uh, sometimes a slowed shuffling gait, and balance problems. Parkinson's disease usually appears in adults between the ages of 60 and 65, but about one out of 10 people with Parkinson's disease is 45 or younger. Lena started feeling symptoms when she was 43. One day when I was, went to the refrigerator to pick up an egg, it just slipped out of my hand. And that was very odd because I felt that I, had, I couldn't control the pressure that you need to grab a thing. The symptoms a person feels and how quickly the disease progresses can vary a lot from person to person. Usually the disease progresses very slowly. She was working very hard and uh, we both were and uh, things uh, just kept on going. Because Parkinson's disease develops over a long period of time, establishing a strong partnership with a health care team is important. That team will include a neurologist, a medical doctor who specializes in disorders of the brain and nerves. Connecting with a neurologist can provide access to the most effective medical treatments for your particular needs. This is a chronic illness. It will be with that person every day for the rest of their lives. And the earlier you learn about the disease and the more supportive the environment in which you're diagnosed and learn about your disease, the better your life will be. The cause of Parkinson's disease is completely unknown. However, uh, there's a huge amount of research going on on the cause. The two major possibilities, of course, are genetics inherited and the other is something in the environment. The most common of the genetic uh, forms of Parkinson's still only accounts for one and a half percent of all cases. Our research and that of others strongly suggests that environment plays a major role. And so our, our current thinking is there's probably a genetic component that makes you more susceptible to developing Parkinson's, but perhaps in addition an environmental component that somehow triggers the, the disease to start. No matter what the root cause, the symptoms of Parkinson's arise because of a problem in a part of the brain that controls movement. Levels of a brain chemical called dopamine are too low in this brain region. Because the symptoms of Parkinson's disease depend on the amount of dopamine in the brain, if there's too little dopamine, you get more symptoms. As the dopamine neurons die out, therefore there's less dopamine, more and more symptoms develop. There is no blood test or brain scan to reveal Parkinson's disease. It is diagnosed by certain signs and symptoms. Ken had been experiencing one of the most classic, a tremor when a limb is at rest, most commonly in one hand. I spent most of the day with my left hand in my pocket uh, because of the tremor. At first, Ken thought his problem was stress-related, but after a year of treatments that didn't seem to work, the possibility of Parkinson's led him to Dr. Shannon. Okay, let's uh, show me how you walk. At the neurologist's office, Ken was checked for other common signs. Limbs that are weak, clumsy, stiff, or aching. Difficulty with walking or balance. They did what's called a pull test, where she would walk behind me, standing, and pull on my shoulders back in a very abrupt manner, and that's to check your balance. There was a psychological exam as well, and many tests of coordination. Other possible signs of early Parkinson's disease include cramped small handwriting, difficulty with tasks that require fine control, such as buttoning a shirt, and decreased arm swing when walking. At the end of the testing, Ken had his answer. And the doctor walked in, extended her hand, and said, you have Parkinson's. And it was, that was just that blunt, and uh, as for me, that type of bluntness I appreciate it because I don't want, don't tell me all the things that it could be, tell me what it is and then we'll deal with it. I think a person wants to know what's going on, they want the diagnosis, they want to know what the prognosis is, their family wants to know, they want to know what they should do about handling their Parkinson's. So having the diagnosis will help the patient early on uh, so they can plan their, their life. But the answer does not always come right away. One reason Parkinson's disease can be difficult to diagnose is that individuals have different sets of symptoms. There are lots of other signs of Parkinson's that are a little bit less well recognized. Things like constipation, depressed mood, sleep disorder, changes in uh, skin texture and skin oiliness.